All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about the hue line transform in OpenCV using Python. So we'll start off by saying what it is, why do we need it, how does it work, and jump straight into a coding example. So by the end of this video, we'll see how we could get this line here identified in this picture on the right. So what is hue line transform? Uh, it's the idea to extract lines from an image uh, through a series of different steps, as we'll see later on. But you can see one of the main distinct lines you can see in this image is this line here on the road. And you can imagine if it's for like autonomous driving, that could be an application for lane detection. So why do we need huge line transform? It's good to extract lines. Uh, it's also good for noisy or segmented lines. So maybe there's like missing information here that we're extrapolating. So here you can see it's extrapolating the rest of the line, even though it can't see it. So how does a hue line transform work? The idea is you have to first parameterize a line based off of two parameters. So here we could define a line by an angle. And then my pen's a little funny here. So you have an angle, and then you also have a distance that we will call d here. So angle is theta, and then we have our distance d. And the idea is, as long as you could parameterize the line in such a way, um, you could describe the line ba based on all the variations of these angles for each distance. So the first step of the process is to find the edge of the image using uh, canny edge detection. And then for each pixel in the edge of an image, so imagine if you run canny edge, you're going to have all the potential candidate uh, points that you're working with. And then for each of those um, edge pixels, what you want to do is calculate the distance from that point. So let's say you have an image, and then you have calculate all your edges. So let's say you have a few points that represent your edge. So what you want to do is calculate distance row from that point. So um, you're going to calculate this distance. Here I call d. Sometimes you'll see it as, uh, the, as the variable row here. So you'll calculate that distance, and then you're going to sweep through angles 0 through 180. So we're going to have a bunch of different lines that pass through that point. That's what you'll be doing. And then you want to count how many pixels intersect with that line. So there's going to only be, in this picture, one line that intersects all these um, points here. Okay. So you're going to repeat the step for each point in the image. And then you're going to apply some threshold and determine which combination of rho and theta have the highest value. And then that will correspond to uh, potential points that describe the line. So um, you're going to get an image that looks like this, which is distance by angle. And you're going to see these two bright spots, which correspond to the combination of angle and distances that produces potential lines. So it's like a, if you think of this as like a bin counting, and it'll just count um, which combination occur the most. Okay, so that's a general idea of the hue line transform. And the idea to get um, an open CV, you're going to see a part where they try to calculate uh, the two points on the line. Uh, the way that works is um, you first you could first describe the distance um, the distance vector as x cosine theta plus y sine theta, and you can imagine this could be um, like in the i in the i and in the j direction, for example. And then here you have a vector that describes it. And then d hat is the unit vector. So the idea is you have a d hat vector, and then you have a l hat vector. So the l hat vector is in the direction of the line. So the idea is if two lines are perpendicular, then the dot product is going to be 0. So you'll use that property. So if you expand this out, you'll get Lx cosine plus Ly sine. And by inspection, you could tell that the dot product will be 0 when Lx equals negative sine theta and when Ly equals cosine theta. So 
that is our direction vector. So L, you, we know that L hat is going to be equal to these values. So if we know the value of L hat, we could calculate one of the points by using D plus a scalar value times L hat, and then the other point is D minus the scalar value times L hat. And K, you just choose some arbitrary big number so that it can span the image. Okay, so without further ado, let's jump into the coding example. Okay, so as usual, let's go ahead and import the modules that we will be using. We have import cv2 as cv, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, and then import numpy as mp. And we have import os, and we have definition hue uh, I call this hue line transform here. And we have if name equals main. And we're going to call our hue line transform function. So inside of here, let's go ahead and read in our image root.os get cwd. And then we have our image path equals os.path.join. And we're going to pass in root demo images and pass in Tessa JPEG. And we have image equals cv dot um, read, and then image path here, and pass in cv um, read, and gonna go for the grayscale version, okay? And we're gonna do some blurring initially because sometimes before the canny edge process, uh, blurring can help remove some noise so we won't get a bunch of nonsense lines that we don't want which is why we're doing the blurring. And we have a big image, so we'll use a big kernel. And we'll call the canny edge. This will be our canny edge results, cv.canny. We'll pass in our blurred image, and we'll play around with threshold values. The two thresholds be uh, 50 and 180. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. So we have our subplot here. You could see our image. And plt.subplots142, we could do plt.show our blurred image. And then plt.subplots143, plt.show. And then we could do their canny edge. And plt.show, let's take a look at what we're dealing with. Okay, so you notice that we see some lines here, and if we look at the smooth version, uh, notice here the ground, especially, it's a lot smoother. So that way we won't pick up all that noise when we're doing the edge detection. So our goal here is to identify the main line, and we see there's a nice line here that we could extract out. Okay, so. Here we'll do the main processing for the hue line transform. So here we have our function. We could have a distance resolution of one, so one for every pixel. We have an angle resolution we define mp.py over 180. So increments throughout um, 180. So not pi, pi over 180. And we have our threshold equals 150 and then our lines equals uh, let's see we call our function here cv hue lines and we could pass in our image after canny edge and pass in our uh, distance resolution and then we have our angle resolution and then we pass in our threshold value so that's our lines function. And here we're going to use a k of 3,000. 2,000 is actually a little bit too low, so we upped it here. So we have curl line in lines. So here's where the magic happens. So inside of this for loop, what we want to do is uh, we're going to calculate rho and theta and curl line. 
based on the structure of the array, we have to get the zeroth element. Uh, you could debug it to see what happens there. Um, but it's just uh, the structure is why we have to do that. And here we have d hat, and we define it as mp dot cosine theta. So that's one value, and then mp dot sine theta. That's our second one. So that's our d hat, and d is rho times d hat, and l hat is going to be uh, very similar. So I'm going to copy paste this. So here we have L hat. The main difference now is you have a negative, and this is sine, and this part is cosine, and that is positive. So our first point, P1 equals D plus K times um, L hat. And then our second point is just going to be minus. So that's our P1 and P2. And we want to convert it to int. We could use p1 equals p1 dot as type and int here. And likewise, we could do p2 as int. So now we could call the line function to plot it. So we have our image, and then we have our p1, 0. We're going to index 0 twice because it's a column vector. And here we're going to have 1, 0. So that's our first point. And then our second point, let's just copy this. So our second point is going to be P2. It's our second point. And then the color that we'll be dealing with is going to be 255. Two fifty five, two fifty five, two fifty five, and then the thickness we could do ten. Okay, so we have our image line, our point here. Okay, let's see, that's good. All right, and now we could do, we could plot our final image that shows our line. So plt dot subplot. 144 plt.am show. And we can see our image here. So if I go ahead and run this, we just see our line drawn. Okay, so we got our line here. So notice that if we were to have, you know, let's say we skipped this step here and just pass in the image directly. Or even if we just play with the threshold value, actually, that might be another way to view this. So if I change the threshold to 50, for instance, and ran the code, we'll see that we get a bunch of lines. Okay, so this may not be what you want. Or it could, depending on what you're doing. But in our case, we just want the dominant line. So we played around the threshold value to get 150, and that's what we wanted. So you can see if I just lower it a little bit, you can see the changes that's made. So even with 139, it identified a few more lines. And notice here that, that it picked up two lines, and that may not be something that we want. OK, so if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.